So, drinking is not all bad then, huh? A new study shows that drinking a glass of wine or beer several times a week may lower your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. The findings suggest that men who drank 14 alcoholic drinks a week had a 43% lower chance of developing type 2 diabetes than non-drinkers. Women who had 9 drinks a week had a 58% lower chance than non-drinkers. However, the findings show that hard liquor had no such effect on men and would increase the risk of diabetes for women, whereas wine appeared to provide benefits for both men and women. The research also highlights the importance of spacing out alcohol intake, because those who only drank once a week were associated with a higher risk than those who drank several times per week. U.S. health experts say they wouldn't recommend people increase their drinking based on this study. They say the study did not provide a proven explanation of any link between alcohol consumption and diabetes. Don't let YouTube ad bots dictate what Tomo News reports. Support us at patreon.com slash Tomo News. About 422 million people worldwide suffer from either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Rising temperatures could be linked to an increase in diabetes cases. A recent study shows that an increase in cases of type 2 diabetes may be linked to global warming, including 100,000 new annual cases in the U.S. alone. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, about one out of every three Americans will develop type 2 diabetes. A study published in the journal BMJ Open Diabetes Research and Care found that as the average annual temperature rose by 1 degree Celsius, the number of diabetes cases rose by 3.1 per 10,000 people. Researchers suspect the rise could be due to the inactivity of brown adipose tissue, a natural body fat that produces heat from burning the fat stored in organs to keep the body warm when temperatures drop. If temperatures stay warm, the inactivity of brown adipose tissue can increase fat stored in organs, causing glucose intolerance and diabetes. According to the World Health Organization, about 422 million people worldwide suffer from either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Artificial intestine endo barrier could treat obesity and diabetes. Imperial College London has launched the trial use of a device known as the endo barrier, aimed at treating obesity and type 2 diabetes. The endo barrier is a plastic tube that enters the body through the mouth and is placed at the end of the stomach into the small intestine. The plastic surface prevents food from being digested by the intestine, and this tricks the brain into feeling full. This also provokes the production of a glucagon-like peptide, a hormone that drives the production of insulin. The endo barrier can only be left inside the body for one year, but researchers hope that the metabolic changes it creates will be permanent even after the device is removed. The developer of the device, GI Dynamics, said Endo Barrier is approved and commercially available in multiple countries, but it is not approved for sale in the US. Human cloning, the cure for diabetes. Scientists in New York announced on Monday that they had used human cloning techniques to create stem cells able to produce insulin, effectively curing diabetes. Type 1 diabetes occurs when the body's immune system destroys insulin-producing beta cells in the pancreas, resulting in insulin deficiency and high blood sugar levels. For the first time, scientists have successfully replaced the damaged DNA of a type 1 diabetes sufferer with the healthy genetic material of an infant donor. The hope is that when these new cells are injected back into the diabetic patient, they will begin to produce insulin. The procedure would prevent the need for daily insulin injections and effectively cure the disease. Hey Tomo Sapiens! Help us beat the ad bots by joining our Patreon News Squad at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Google is developing a prototype contact lens that measures glucose levels in tears. The device provides a non-invasive method to track glucose in diabetic patients. A sensor, antenna, and transistor chips are embedded between two contact lenses. The sensor measures glucose levels in tears. The antenna then sends the data to a mobile device. The current prototype generates one reading per second.
developers are also looking to integrate LED lights that flash as soon as glucose levels cross into dangerous thresholds.